Welcome to the Creating High Performance Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Olympian Jonathan Edwards. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Jonathan. Welcome to another weekly live We're talking about ADD and ADHD today. And so I got to start by saying I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> I love those ads. Have you seen those ads? I think the guy's like acting like he's a doctor, but he's actually just really smart because he got a good night's sleep with no hotel. That's me today. Although the bag's under my eyes, I don't really feel like that. So hey, um, a lot of good stuff going on today. And um, I apologize I'm a little late, but um, for those of you listening on iTunes, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you ever got a question for me, you can email me, Coach Edwards at athletespecific.com uh, good stuff Jill Sager good to see you Jill Sager are you still in Germany are you live in Germany because um, for those of you that might know Jill Sager uh, her son uh, just won his first junior world cup medal in the sport of luge which is awesome as a doubles guy and so I'm a big fan of that part of the Kellogg's and Kellogg Sager team uh, go find them on Facebook it's funny because Kellogg's Sager to me, just sounds like Kellogg's Egger, and that's a really good breakfast sandwich. So that's really what I'm thinking about. So, um, so hey, so a lot of stuff to talk about today. I want to talk about ADD and ADHD because um, I have some experience working with athletes who have this, um, and uh, a lot of the families that I work with will eventually the parents will tell me they think their kid has it, even though they may not be diagnosed. All right, so really important to understand that um, uh, in this today's day and age of the internet. We kind of think that any kid who's got trouble focusing has a um, has either ADD or ADHD. But then most of the entrepreneurs I know would tell you that they all feel like they have ADD or ADHD. Okay, uh, Cameron Harold, uh, who you can find on Facebook pretty easily. Um, if you guys remember the company One Eight Hundred Got Junk, uh, that company went through a ridiculous um, growth cycle. Uh, he now owns a company, runs a company called the COO Alliance, where he teaches or he coaches second in command to big companies like $5 million in sales and over. And he'll tell you the diagnosis of AD, ADD and ADHD, especially for entre entrepreneurs, is a benefit. And so why do I talk about entrepreneurs and athletes? Well, a lot of the athletes I work with who come from entrepreneurial households are have a different mindset than most. So a lot of my athletes who come from non-entrepreneurial households tend to put more focus, more more emphasis on the negative sides of traits like ADD or ADHD than um, uh, than entrepreneurial families do. And a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you know they'll just say like I, I totally have ADD, like I can barely focus, right? And uh, so it's it's uh, we're, we've all got shiny squirrel options. So. Uh, Don Akers, hello. Sheree Trance, Linda Gosnell, good to see you. Jonathan Petty, hello, sir. Um, everybody's just checking in for the day, so I really appreciate it. So one of the things, uh, so when we talk about ADD, let's first talk about like the negative sides of things. So when we think about ADD and ADHD, um, you know, we think of uh, terms like impatience, okay? Impatience. Uh, we have uh, difficulty performing tasks quietly. That's an interesting one. Um, I had a gentleman that worked for our, our company years ago who just did like handyman work. And the fascinating thing about it was that he always had to be making noise while he was doing. So he was always like, mm, or, you know, huffing, or he was talking to himself or things like that. So that was a sign of that. But that kept him focused by talking about it. Um, difficulty following instructions. Uh, this one I'm not always really sure about, but that's, we'll get to that later. But uh, um, trouble with patience. Right, so one of my favorite quotes is, um, uh, it, it's actually a meme. It's uh, it's a uh, Benjamin Franklin, and it says, um, uh, "Patience is a virtue." Why he says, "Why is patience a vir virtue? Why can't hurry the bleep up be a virtue?" I love I love that one. Um, I had it on my desk for a long time. Uh, so Jonathan Redford, good to see you. Um, you know, losing things is is a trait of ADD or ADHD. Um, and or talkingly, seemingly nonstop. Now, as a coach, I'll share with you one of my first ADHD stories with an athlete. Uh, when I was very young, uh, I got a chance to run a high school lacrosse program in Bedford, Massachusetts. And um, one, I'll never forget the first uh, first week of school. Uh, so we we 
we're playing in a parking lot because there's snow on the ground in Massachusetts in, in March. And uh, we're like 10 days into practice. Like I think we had like two weeks of practice. And I'll, I'll never forget this. Kid shows up one day at the very end of practice in jeans, his sweatshirt, uh, his bas- his ba- uh, he had uh, basketball shoes on. He had his elbow pads pulled up over his sweater, his gloves on, his stick, his helmet on. But he's basically in street clothes and his lacrosse gear. And he goes, sorry, Coach Evans, I'm sorry I'm late. I, I, I've, I've been in detention. And I'm like, for 10 days? I'm like, what's your name? And he goes, uh, Just, Justin Kessler. And uh, now I was, this is, Bedford is a military town. So Bedford has an air base. And so a lot of the kids I had were from military families. So discipline was not really an issue. Um, and so having a kid show up like this was really kind of out of the blue for me. But he's super respectful, right? And he, he literally, he was like standing attention. And I said, well, why have you been, uh, why'd you have, what'd you get detention for? And he's like, um, I, I glued some kid's locker shut. <laughs> and the first thing that came out of my mouth was like, what kind of glue did you use? Because <laughs> right? I'm like 10 days detention. This was a good deal. And he's like, um, I got this high-end super glue from, and, and anyway, he went on with the start. But we laughed about it and I got him into practice. But then a, a few weeks later, at the end of a practice, this minivan drives up like so all the kids have left this gray i'm packing up this gray minivan shows up and pulls up in front of me and it felt like like a mafia sting and the window rolls down and this woman goes coach edwards and i was like "Uh uh-oh and she goes i'm justin's mom and uh she goes, I just want you to know he has severe ADHD. Now, this is back in like the early 90s when ADHD was like a thing, right? When, when, it, was, when it wasn't like every kid had ADD. It was like, you know, there was a couple of kids who had it and, it was, and it, was, it was real. And so this, Justin was a kid who had it and, um, and he, had, he was on medication for it. And if he didn't have his meds, it was a, it was a nightmare. For me as a coach, especially as a young coach, not knowing how to deal with it effectively, And one of the things that I learned about it was there were certain things he was good at and certain things he was not good at it. And what I looked at, I look back on my time as a coach and I go, I was so crap at certain things about dealing with that athlete. And I I feel bad about it. Like I look back on it now and I'm like, oh, I I wish I had known certain things that I know now. Um, Because in a team environment, an athlete who has ADD or ADHD is looks distracted, right? They're they're moving around. They want, especially boys. They need to fidget and move. And God, remember fidget spinners a couple of years ago? Like that went hot and heavy, and then pst, gone, right? So, so we tend to just focus on the negative side of things for athletes because the coaches don't really know how to deal. And I always say this about athletes in a team environment, right? Picture a team like a bubble, right? And, and that bubble is. It's three hundred. It's it's three dimensional, right? And so you have athletes that push like one end of the bubble, and you have athletes that push the other end of the bubble, and then you have athletes that are off on either side. And sometimes they're pushing, and 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 that bubble may feel like it's going to burst sometimes because from a coaching perspective, you only have a certain number of attention units, right, to be able to deal with all of your athletes. And then you have an athlete who has something like ADD or ADHD, and that's pulling you away from center. And coaches don't like that, right? It's very hard to, to do that. And so we tend to label athletes in the classroom and on the field, like that if they have ADD or ADHD, that they're never going to reach their dreams. And that's not true because there's some amazing stories now of, uh, of and here's just a couple that I found on the internet. Uh, this is kind of fun. Um, so there's celebrities with ADD or a, oh, sorry, ADHD. Um, and so there's Adam Levine right? Um, there's, uh, Albert Einstein, supposedly, uh, Channing Tatum, whatever, uh, Glenn Beck, James Carville, Justin Timberlake, right? Uh, Karina Smirnoff, whoever the hell that is, uh, Richard Branson, um, Salvador Dali. Well, who would, how would we know? Like, really? Like, what are we, what are we, Salvador Dali? Like that was a long time ago. Um, Ty Pennington, Whoopi Goldberg, and then athletes with ADHD that I found openly, and there's a lot more than this, but but there's Michael Phelps, right, the swimmer, uh, which is interesting. Because I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, Terry Bradshaw, for all my NFL fans, um, who's he's on Fox Sports on Sunday, and if you watch him, but he was a great, like a Hall of Fame quarterback for the uh, 
Pittsburgh Steelers in football, and he's and people just love this guy, and he's and he's a riot, and and you and you know, but he's very successful now. He owns like horse farms, and he was a three time Super Bowl champ, I think, and um um and and so 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 I can list like a, a ton of athletes who have it, and Cami Granado for my American Olympic hockey fans is one who who I knew personally, but I think when as I look back on my career, there's a lot of athletes who had had um sim like symptoms you would say or or signs that they had ADD or ADHD um and and so when i look back on my lacrosse experience and, and just back to justin there that i was telling everybody about it, um when justin got the ball like first of all he had boundless amounts of energy right boundless amounts of energy and that was really good in in a sport like lacrosse where you know it was like if there was a ball and it was loose and oh my god he was there right it was great um and, and so there, but when he got the ball, it was just him to the goal, him to the goal. There was no like team offense setup idea with Justin. It was just like, he would get it and he would go. And then we, we weren't a very good team. So that's not, that doesn't work real well. Like Justin would be on the field and then he would be gone. Uh, he would be shooting at the net and the, and, and we'd lose the ball and then the ball be coming out the other way. We'd be on defense. But when the ball came back to the attack, um, Justin was on it, and and to kind of fast forward the story, Justin, by the time he graduated, was all league in the toughest league in the state of Massachusetts, right? And but he was just as ADHD his senior year as he was freshman year, and I could do nothing about it. And as a coach, I felt really bad. But one thing I did know is I didn't want to feel I didn't want Justin to feel too bad. But one thing that I was really bad at as a coach was trying to coach him from the sideline. And, and, and it was, and it was awkward as a young coach. It was awkward for me. Now I know that I just understand that that athlete with ADD or ADHD is going to pull me away from center. Okay. Now what I don't want people to, to, to do is, especially as coaches is, and this happens to a lot of coaches that they are very, like, if I picture that bubble again, that three dimensional bubble that I, that I, I told you to start thinking about when we started this talk. Some coaches are just stuck in the middle of that bubble in a very tiny, tiny space, right? And they're not moving very much. They're just thinking forward. They're thinking team. They're thinking win. Uh, and then they don't have the bandwidth to to be able to survive, right? All the athletes that pull them in all directions. There's a lot of coaches though that do a lot of great work, and the, and which when we try real hard to be able to to, withstand, to be able to be some be there for everybody, but sometimes we just can't. But that doesn't mean your athlete is bad because of it. It just means that according to this environment, this sphere, it's putting some stress on the on the situation, right? But let's talk about the benefits of ADD and ADHD and why, um, because I well, I've got a soft spot for athletes who struggle. Um, but sports is their thing, right? And I know for a lot of parents that when your athlete who suffers from some of these negative qualities uh, that people say ADD and ADHD have, um, they get to sports and they find a home and we want, and I don't want them to just feel like they have a home. I want them to feel like they can thrive. Right. And that's really, really important. Uh, Dan Sullivan, who runs a, a coaching, a business coaching program called strategic coach, uh, if you look for some of his podcasts and, you, and you, you know, he's a, he was a guy in his seventies and he's on Ritalin now or the equivalent now, um, which is basically a legal amphetamine. Let I me, mean, let's be real. Um, uh, but he talks about the benefits that, that ADD and ADHD has given him, right? So there's energy, right? One of the things about kids that have ADD and ADHD is they have energy and they typically don't like to stand in a huddle, right? They don't, they're not great in a locker room at times. They're not the quiet kid in the corner with their headphones on. They're the one like singing out loud and they're dancing, right? And you walk in the doors of the coach and like, Hey coach, 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 how's it going? You know, you're like, dude, just give me a second. I kind of think, right? But that energy when harnessed properly can do amazing things. Right. Um, I remember when I was young learning about Tony Robbins for some of you, you guys might know Tony Robbins, big motivational guru. And I was like, Oh my God, he gets so much done. Like, how does he get so much done? And then I found out he's got like a thyroid issue and he's got like, he sleeps two hours a night. Well, I'm like, you know, no wonder he gets stuff done. Right. I don't have that. I got to sleep like eight hours. Right. So, so, but the kids that have the ADD have the energy. Um, and then if, when they can channel it, right. When they, when they can channel it to this thing, there's nothing better. 
And so sometimes one of the things, my athletes that are in my blueprint program, I have an athlete right now where I've been working with their, their parents a lot because the parents are like, well, he's got to do the sport, but he's got to also get good grades. And I'm like, yeah, okay, but but your your kid is so, there's an energy here. And when he's focused, when he's athletic, when he's focusing on his sport, he is 100% and he's doing amazing stuff. Go with that, Right find a way to make the schooling work. And the pro- for them, it was a shift in schools. It was a shift in program that, that was able to look and go, all right, I understand what this kid is dealing with. Let me help him, right? Let's put him in a situation where he can succeed, right? Not try to make him conform, right, to the, the environment. Now, that's something I want everybody to, to consider. Because in a team, though, in a, in a team environment, and even if, you're, if your athlete is an individual athlete, athlete, like a skier or a figure skater or a luge athlete for some of my luge families that are listening right now, um, there is a team concept that you do need to fit in, right? There's the, we want to get them close enough to be in that bubble, right? But, but we also, we've got to, we've got to create some, a partnership there between the coach and the program and the athlete. How can we best go through this? Okay. Now, I guess here's a place where I'll, I'll just talk about medication for a second. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not a doctor, right? I don't play one on TV. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So, but, so some kids are medicated and some aren't, right? And we all know the discussion about, you know, the benefits of medication. And sometimes, sometimes people are quick to medicate. Um, there are athletes who have been successful on medication, but also there's, there's athletes who realize the energy that they had this kind of bouncing off the wall actually helped them went off medication, right? And so with some quick Googling around, you can find some really cool stories about athletes who did that, all right? But I'll say this is from a coaching perspective, um, you know, I'm coaching my son's like tier five soccer team, right? And, uh, and we've got a kid on that team uh, and who I just love to death and whose father actually died unexpectedly last year, which was really tough. Um, you know, literally it was like saw the dad at the bottle drive on Saturday and he wasn't around on Monday and it was really tough. Well, their son, you know, full on ADHD, mom would send him to school with his medication. But when he came to practice at night, she wouldn't give it to him because it affected his sleep. But we couldn't, like, I couldn't coach him. Like, he was just like, you know, in a team environment, I got 20 boys and I got this one kid bounce off. I'm like, oh, wow, like totally outside my bandwidth, right? Especially as a volunteer coach in that situation. Did the best with what we could. But one of the things to know athletically, and I'm talking strictly from a performance standpoint here, that there's medication that can help an athlete focus, but sometimes there's environments where we don't want the athlete on the medication. Performance only, okay? I'm just speaking strictly from performance, right? But you as a family have to decide that what's best. But be open to the understanding of like, well, geez, when my athlete is like got the ball at his feet or the ball on a stick or the puck on a stick and he's going to the goal, I don't want anything slowing that down. And you're, you'd be right, right? You'd be right to say that, right? So it's really important to understand understand that 100%, okay? Because we don't always want, we don't want to numb the athlete. We don't want to dull that energy sometimes. We want to embrace it as much as we can. All right, so really, really important stuff. Um, spontaneity is a, t- like, is, a, is a quality that we, we tend to look on somewhat negatively, all right? Especially in the business world, right? We want to stay focused. We want to be um, moving on just certain things and not others. We want to, um, we want to, we want to kind of dull down, um, impulse, um, impulsivity, but th- I would say athletically the, the ability to break away from the, the norm, right? The ability to be, and this kind of suit, this kind of goes in the next category here, which is creativity and inventiveness, right? Now, Michael Phelps, who had ADD, we don't need creativity and inventiveness in the pool, but we need that energy, right? And we all saw back in 2008, we saw his energy when he won eight gold medals, right? Um, But, you know, Michael Phelps isn't all of a sudden going to be inventing like a new stroke, but his ability to focus in, right? And, and, And we're going to cover that in a second here, was his benefit. But in some sports, creativity can be an advantage, right? 
uh, creativity for an athlete, like let's say like it's a lacrosse player um, on offense, right? You know, ability to to move and, and come up with something out of the norm, do something unique. That's a that's a benefit, right? Entrepreneurially, people who have more creativity typically succeed because they're able to have that psychological flexibility. Right? That's what I teach my athletes in my blueprint program is like I want them to be psychologically flexible. I don't want them locked into one specific thing. Right. So I, I want to harness that, that creativity and that impulsivity because that, that can be re- really beneficial depending on the sport. Okay. Um, the hyper focused, um, the, the hyper focused side of, of athletes with ADHD and ADD is, is really cool to me because when you talk about flow, and I just did a presentation, um, uh, when, when I just, I, I did a pre- presentation on flow recently to a bunch of athletes and we talked about like getting into a flow state. One of the things we know about flow um, in the business world, especially is that, is that you can be five times more productive than people who are not in flow. And some of you may be able to, you, you, you know, you, you feel that you do. Um, and, and so one of the things that we, we want to understand is that is that as we're as we're working towards flow, flow is a focused state, and and an athlete who has um, an athlete who has the ability to get focused, that's an advantage, right? That's a total advantage. And uh, Don Akers just wrote a really cool question, which I'll get to in a second. Don, thank you. Um, and so we want to be, we want to be. Like like anybody will tell you that when you're in flow, that's a good thing, right? So an athlete who has a tend to lock in. Now, now, now what has unfortunately tainted ADHD and ADD is those kids get locked in on something that we don't think is of benefit. Maybe it's a video game, right? Maybe they're attached when they were young, they were attached to like their favorite doll, like they're stuffy, and they wouldn't they wouldn't leave the house if they didn't have it. Those are extreme cases, right? And I, you know, I, I, I interviewed a woman a number of years ago who's, um, and I, listen, I don't want to get, I don't want to open a huge can of worms here, right? So just, I'm going to share the story for the story's sake. Just let it be, okay? Um, but her, her athlete had, or her, her son had, had been great till about three years old and then had gotten a vaccine, all right? But no negative comments, everybody. Let's hang with me here. But then what that call, what that ended up, there was a change in, 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 in psychology in the, in the kid. And then eventually everybody's throwing medication at this kid. And I think that was unfortunate, right? Long story short, a couple of years, this woman went on a, this full on, you know, um, she, she, she was like, is it bad that my son has, is so focused on something, right? What is the benefit to that? Now this, this, this kid wasn't an athlete at all, but what was great was the mom was open to the idea of the question of like, what's good about this? Right, what's good about this right now, and and you know, a couple of years later, as, as this as this kid got older, they made dietary changes, they did all sorts of things, and and the kid's a normal human being right now. Now he has some sensitivities to other things, um, you know, allergens is a big one can kind of trigger him, but 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 just if you take that question and go like, what's good about this? That hyper focus side of getting our kid, getting kids who have ADD, ADHD into a sport, and then putting them in a position to succeed, like holy smokes, right? That's the home. And Don Akers wrote a great question. He said, "How does playing sports help kids with ADHD improve their self esteem and perform more effectively in school and at work?" That's okay. There's a lot of questions there, Don. From the sports side, I think one of the benefits is that the kids just find a way. They understand. They're like, wait a second. I'm succeeding here, right? And, and I think that's the most important thing is when you take a kid who's off the wall by everybody else's definition and you get them into sport and now they're locked in on something and they have success. Like that kid, Justin, I was telling you guys about when he got the ball, right? he had so much energy to hunt down a ball, right? He was getting like, he was a bull in a China shop, man. He was getting that thing. And when he got it, it was he was gone. And now the, the, what was cool is that he was able to now, that was the anchor. Like the success in the sport was the anchor for him. And he ended up eating better. He ended up working out a ton. By the time he was a senior, the kid was jacked. 
Like, and, and that all came from that one success. And then it also transitioned into school because for him, being good at lacrosse was a avenue to playing in college and getting an education. And that's really, I mean, is it's one of the best things we can do, right? Right. And so, but, but the sport thing was the anchor and I allowed him, and I won't say I did this by any conscious decision at the time. I was too young to understand what I was doing, but I just knew that when he got the ball, he was going. And you know, yeah, I would yell at him from the sideline as an un, as an inexperienced young coach did, does, but I just knew that he was happy, right? And he was in the zone, and he was so disappointed when we lost, right? But then he harnessed that, and he took it into other things, and he got more focused and he got more, he was able to make that transition. So I just think that, that if your athlete has deals with AD, if you're a coach and deal with athletes have AD and ADHD, if you can harness that as much as you can. And one of the things that I've done as a coach is get around the parents. So uh, I call this camp firing, like getting around the campfire away from sport. One of the things I do with all my parents before a season is I'll send out a little questionnaire. It's a Google Doc. is It's not HIPAA compliant. It's not like you know privacy rated. It's just me as a coach going to the parent and saying, "Hey, listen, tell me about your kid." Because if you don't tell me about your kid, right, and these things come up down the road, I. I think it's the job as a coach to understand like, all right, we've got to figure this out, right? But I tell my parents like, I, and, and the funny story about my little questionnaire at the beginning of the year is the parents who don't answer it, I know are going to be a problem. It's It happens every year. But the parents who reach out to me and say like, you know, my son or my daughter struggles with attention disorders, like they're on medication, um, I got to know. Because as the coach, I want to I want to make the most the best experience for your athlete with what we're with whatever brings us together right now. So for me, a lot like it was lacrosse. Um, you know, for my son when, when I was coaching his soccer program, like you know, like I said, tier four, tier five kids. I'm like, dude, tell me about your kid, right? Tell me what's going on. But if your coach doesn't do that for you, and your athlete is dealing with ADD, or let's say you're a parent, your kid doesn't have ADD or ADHD, but you know a parent who does. Encourage those parents to go to the coach and say, hey, listen, we want to help you have the best season possible that we, we can. We want, to, we want to have the best season for our, our kid. Um, we want to also make it, you know, you got to know that it's going to be a bit challenging for that coach, right? Come to them and say, like, listen, have you worked with an athlete like this before, right? How do you feel about it? Because if your coach all of a sudden spouts off and goes, oh, geez, really? He's on Ritalin? Uh, and he starts doing that, like you're like, wait a second, hold up, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta find some common ground here, or else it's gonna be a long season, okay? Because I believe that sports, you know, sports like anything, is one of those things that creates, it's the anchor. And in a funny story, like this past year, I don't know if you guys saw it, but you've all heard about the game Fortnite. Well, they had their first like world championships this year, and. You know, I bet all those kids to some degree have, you would probably be diagnosed as ADAD, ADD or ADHD. But when they're on that game and they're like locked in, and what did the winning guy win? Like $6 million? <laughs> it's like, you're going to see esports athletes be the highest paid. They're going to be more, they're, they're going to be paid more than sports athletes in the future for sure, right? Because there's going to be more kids doing it and it, and because it, it feeds the brain. And, and, and it's, it's, it's going to be a viable profession for some of those kids. Okay. So, but, but meet your coach halfway, create that partnership, understand that, um, you know, that, that they, um, it, 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 you got to work together. You know, I work with a lot of goalies. Everybody kind of knows that here. Now I work with a lot of goalies across a number of sports. Lacrosse is my big one. Um, and I had this mom this last week, send me a video of her, her of her son, um, uh, her son plays hockey as well. And, and the kid's like eight and the kid was staring off into the stands and the ball, like the puck comes, was shot. It was a bad clear from the other end of the ice. So this puck goes the entire length of the ice and her kids like looking into the stands or he's counting the lights in the ceiling. And she's like, is this wrong? Should I be worried? I'm like, your kid's eight. <laughs> like, like we gotta, she's like, yeah, but he can't sit still. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like he's eight, right? Like embrace it. So, but, but let's just, just to recap here, energy, 
if a kid has energy, is that good or bad for athletics? Everybody would agree it's pretty good, okay? Um, are they spontaneous? Well, if they're spontaneous in the field, that's great. If they're spontaneous in the huddle with the coach, probably not so much, right? But the coach has to deal with that, right? And, you know, one thing that I've noticed over the years is that teammates, they know, with the internet now, they know if a kid has an issue, if they're dealing with ADD or ADHD, or if he's on his meds or he's not, they know. And and if we can embrace it, not fear it, just embrace it and be like, yeah, okay, Josh, Josh, you good? You good tonight? Like, you know, coach, I didn't take my meds. I've had that happen with like 12-year-old kids. No, coach, I didn't take my meds. The whole team knows, right? So now it's like, okay, how do we work with Josh, right? Because, the you know, the kid over here who's like the chess player, but he's playing soccer and he's 20 pounds overweight. He's like, oh, okay, we'll give it to Josh. He'll score every time. Great. Let's bring, let's embrace it, not, not reject it. Okay. Um, being creative and inventive. If your coach is not allowing your athlete to have moments of creativity and inventiveness, if you were just running like rigid drills or rigid repetition, um, and there's no chance for focus, your kid's going to go nuts. And, and, and I say that, you know, not, not literally, but you know what I mean? Like they're going to be having trouble. It's like having them sit in a class all day, right? If I'm teaching a class, it, like and I had to do this at a school I was at years ago. I had to do a classroom p- portion for the lacrosse that I was coaching. I hated it. <laughs> um, but I would let the boys walk. They didn't have to sit down. They could stand up. They could move around, do whatever, right? And they could embrace it. But if your coach isn't doing that, if drills are rigid and your kid is like freaking out and doesn't feel like he's succeeding because the coach is yelling at him, you got to go to the coach, right? And sometimes it's going to be really hard to get that coach to change. I'll, I'll be honest. But that's the discussion you, you got to have. But the hyper-focused side of this is probably what excites me the most is that, you know, your ability, like this is what I loved about luge. This is what I love now about skiing or bobsled or things like that. Great flow sports, but every sport can have that when you're in the zone and you're just locked in, right? But the ability to let your athlete be hyper-focused, whether it's on the field of play or off, right? If they're focused in anything, I think that's a good thing. Any entrepreneur will tell you that, right? If you can focus in on something, whether you're writing an article or you're zoning in on a client or sales, that's fine, Right? But I'm gonna recap. I'm just gonna cap with one thing here, because everybody who's listening to me right now, you've got an athlete who is trying to make a sport work really well for them, right? But there's a pressure. There's always a pressure of like, well, is my athlete missing out on life, right? Oh, my athlete, all they do is you know, all they do is they're focused in on lacrosse or hockey or luge or bobsled or skiing or whatever. And, and to the, and to the exclusive exclusion of maybe friends or, or family or other things. And we, and, and we're making them feel like that's wrong because you as the parent are thinking like, Oh shit, they got to get on with their life. Right. Right. And I get it. Time, energy, and money resources. It's one of my three layers. Like it's a big deal. And as a parent, if you're sucked in, if you're, if you're, if you're spending more money, you know, I met a, I met a skier this last week who, you know, they're spending 50,000 bucks a year for her to ski. You know, mom's an architect, dad's a lawyer, 50 grand. Finally, they had to go, we're tired. You have to stop. And that's so frustrating. I know as a parent, right? It's so frustrating to everybody. And it's something a parent never wants to have to say, but I get it. Sometimes you're tired, but the worst thing that I think can happen is when you go to your athlete and somehow you create this like sideways angst where they stop their sport because, you know, we're, we're exhausted as parents. But the truth is, is that, you know, they then leave sport feeling like they weren't successful at sport because they were dealing with something like ADD or ADHD. We got to be really honest. So does every, everybody's got to follow me on that one. I know I went a little bit tangent there, but there's so many benefits there. But I've seen parents who are like, you know, who said like, you've got to stop because, oh, you're not good enough, right? Well, now, now that athlete's got to live with that for the rest of their life, right? They think, oh, I wasn't good enough, but really it was, they just couldn't afford it anymore. You know, I, I quit doing luge because I just couldn't afford it anymore, right? But I know that, right? And, but, it, but I wasn't able to live it out because, because I, or I wasn't, I didn't quit because I sucked. I quit because I didn't have any money, 
right? So two angsts either way there, right? But you got to be honest about it. So listen, if your athlete has ADD or ADHD, or you know an athlete who does, again, I'm not a doctor. I am just a, someone who is hyper interested in this and in athletes across a variety of sports. It doesn't have to be a disadvantage, but better yet, you can flip it to an advantage. Um, you know, it's, it's good to have, and it's, it's just good to get like, to frame it in the way that your athlete's going to embrace it and, and go hundred percent with it and, and turn it. And like I said, Cameron Harold from, from the CEO Alliance is one of the, one of the most successful entrepreneurs I know. He'll tell you, he's like, no, this is it's super advantage. It's super, it's, it's a huge deal. So let your kids embrace that. Linda adds, and this is great, Linda. She goes, in order not to get a burnout as a parent, it's good to ask for help and have a great support system to help with driving, <laughs> driving at, it says assets, but athletes to practice or doing whatever they can want to make the dream a reality. And that's so true. Linda, like, you know, I tell all my parents at, at the beginning of any season, listen, it's a village, right? It's a village. Like, let's get back to that. And if you're having trouble driving your kid to practice or doing this or doing that, or if it's a financial thing, ask for help, like ask for help because sometimes there's options there that you might not be aware of. Right. So, but listen, um, I hope that, you know, it's funny. A lot of people on this today, a lot of new names, a lot of, a lot of old names, a lot of people in kind of record numbers here, which is great. Um, if you like this, do me a favor and, and give it a like or heart at the top. That's always really helpful for the Facebook algorithm and all that crap. But, um, share this with somebody who needs to hear it. Um, and if you want to reach out to me personally and you're looking for some resources, just send me an email coach Edwards at athlete I'll be happy to help you there. Or you can message me on Facebook that works too. So, um, but as always, thank you everybody for who joined in. Um, and, uh, and I want the best for your athletes, you know, and, uh, and, and I want to see them, I want to see them win. All right. I really do. I want to see your athletes win because I know it's not just about the sport. It's about the like, it's about the life after it. And I think if your kid, as Don Akers asked, you know, and said, if you can, um, if you can take someone with ADD or ADHD, if you can put them in a sporting environment that they love and they can succeed at that thing, that they can transfer that experience to other things. It may take them a while to find their thing later, but don't rush it. Don't, you know, man who chases two rabbits loses both, right? This is going to be a, an incredibly small blip on the radar of life, right? When it comes to this, this athlete experience for them. Um, and the, the experience is going to stay with them forever. Okay. So just remember that and take a, take a breath. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate your time. Dave Nord, thank you for that nice comment there at the end. I really appreciate that too. Um, but if I can do anything for you guys, um, email me coach Edwards at athlete specific, um, specific .com, And I will, uh, I'll reach back out to you for sure. Okay. Don Akers, I see this comment as well. And, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put something, I'll put something together. That's a good one. Don Akers writes, can you create a handbook for parents with kids who have ADHD and how they work with a coach? It was a pretty big project, but we probably come up with something, I think. It would be good stuff. So thanks, everybody. Listen, I may take a break next week. Stay tuned. Um, but um, Christmas is coming. I got a lot of things on the go. Um, but as always, thank you for everybody who stayed, uh, who, who was in touch today. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. It's Jonathan and do me a favor, share this with an athlete, a parent or coach who needs to hear it. And then head on over to athletespecific.com and download any of our freebies. We've got free automatic negative thought download, free webinars, free courses for athletes and parents. And I hope to see you there soon. Cheers.